Let's compare and contrast the three most popular weight loss medications on the market today. Semaglutide, terzepatide, and retitrutide. As always, a quick medical disclaimer. This is not medical advice. This should not be used to treat or diagnose medical conditions. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. The first one we're gonna talk about is what everybody knows. That's semaglutide. You've either heard about it from Oprah, if you're in the US, you've seen a ton of commercials for either Ozempic or Wagovi, or you know somebody that's on it that has lost a ton of weight. Whether they did it through their doctor, they got it on the black market, or they did it through a clinic like mine, Steel Health and Hormone Center, where we use compounded GLP-1 RAs. So like I said, semaglutide is a glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist. And for our case, let's take a look on how it acts on the brain, the central nervous system, and the stomach to help facilitate weight loss we're also gonna look at some other benefits. So in terms of weight loss and how it acts on the brain, it can quiet the habit centers of the brain and it can also lower hunger cues. Now, is that because it's influencing dopamine? Is it just influencing habits themselves? I think it's probably both. And I think it's acting a lot on the reward center of the brain. And the reason I say that is because of this study right here. It's titled, Potential Role of Glucagon-Like Peptide 1, GLP-1, Receptor Agonists in Substance Use Disorder, a Systematic Review of Randomized Trials. So more or less, they had a whole bunch of papers. They narrowed it down to five, and this is what they found. So in the results, Therapeutic effects of GLP-1 RA on SUD, substance use disorder, was assessed in five studies with three demonstrating a significant decrease in SUD, alcohol and nicotine. GLP-1 RA's impact on body weight, BMI, and hemoglobin A1C was reported in three studies. These revealed a notable reduction in these parameters among the GLP-1 RA treated group. They did not use semaglutide. They used what's called exenatide and dulaglutide. So that's like the generation before semaglutide, but it's still a GLP-1 RA, and I do think that that translates. Now that it, we know it quiets food noise and it'll act on the habit center so you're not constantly grazing, that's anecdotally what we notice with a lot of our patients. It also acts on the intestinal tract to slow down intestinal motility. So if you eat something, it's gonna take longer for you to excrete it, and as a result, you will feel fuller longer feeling fuller, not getting into bad habits, and changing the reward center in your brain all can contribute to weight loss. And in fact, what does the weight loss look like? Next study we're gonna look at right here from September 19th of 2022, weight loss outcomes associated with semaglutide, treatment for patients with overweight or obesity. It's a pretty comprehensive study, but we're just gonna look at the findings right here. In this cohort study of 175 patients with overweight or obesity, the total body weight loss percentages achieved were 5.9% at three months and 10.9% at six months. Pretty significant. The longer you did it and the higher the dose, the more weight that you lost, that should come as no surprise. So semaglutide is what we've all heard about. I don't wanna say it's the first generation, but it's probably the most popular GLP-1 and has been around and in the news the longest. But now let's look at the next generation. Let's look at terzepatide right now. Terzepatide is also a GLP-1 RA, but it acts on another increasing hormone called GIP. That stands for glucose-dependent and selenotrophic polypeptide. And this has some independent effects from GLP-1. First and foremost, it can help promote fat oxidization. So when you're in a calorie deficit, which is necessary to lose weight, your body needs to get stores of energy from itself. So it can draw from a lot of different things. For example, it can draw from muscle tissue or it can draw from fat stores. We want it to draw from fat stores because we don't wanna lose lean tissue, we wanna lose fat tissue. And when you activate GIP, what's gonna happen is your body can mobilize fat a little bit easier. So you can lose fat faster, in theory. We're gonna get into practice here in a little bit. GIP can also promote the browning of white fat. So think about your body has obviously a lot of fat in it. It can either be white fat or brown fat. White fat is metabolically extremely inexpensive, so it doesn't take a lot of calories to maintain. Brown fat, in the grand scheme of things, is also not very metabolically expensive, but it's more metabolically expensive than the white fat. So as a result, your basal metabolic rate is enhanced when you're activating GIP because you're browning some of that white fat. So you should expect to be in a calorie deficit, a deeper calorie deficit. Does it contribute a ton? Probably not, but it contributes something. And then GIP, like GLP-1, also will slow down gastric emptying so it can make you feel fuller 
longer. That's in theory should contribute to more robust weight loss. What does the data actually say? It says exactly that. So we take a look at this study, weight loss efficiency and safety of terzepatide, a systematic review. So more or less, they aggregated 10 studies. There was something like almost 10,000 participants and they compared terzepatide to GLP-1 RAs, they use semaglutide or dulaglutide again to placebo, so nothing, and then to insulin. Now we can dig into this for a half hour, but let's look at what we're actually trying to see in this video. And this is the raw data right here. You don't have to understand what all this means. We're just gonna look at that standardized mean difference on the right. So you see that line going down, it goes down to zero. There's two, four on the right, negative two, negative four on the left. And think about it like this. If there is a square or a line on the left side of the zero, that means terzepatide resulted in more weight loss. If there's a square or a line on the right side of the zero, that means that the dulaglutide or the semaglutide showed more robust weight loss. And I mean, it's, it's obvious right here. So it doesn't matter the dose of terzepatide. So five milligrams, 10 milligrams, or 15 milligrams, Terzepatide won all day long. It showed more robust weight loss. And if you look at the trend here, it's kind of easy to visually see. The more that the patients, or rather the test subjects took, the more ro robust weight loss that they had. So it does seem that in theory, terzepatide results in more weight loss. And then in practice, it actually does result in more weight loss. Now let's get into the new kid on the block, Reditrutad. We're gonna do that and then we're gonna put it all together. I'll put a chart so you can see exactly how these things stack up against each other and what medications you may consider taking. Reditrutad is also a GLP-1 RA, a GIP RA, and then a GCG receptor agonist. GCG stands for glucagon. So when you agonize the glucagon receptor, there's a couple of unique things that happen. First and foremost, it further contributes to lipolysis. So your body can now even more readily use fat as energy stores. And in theory, that should preserve lean tissue. And when you look at the raw data, there is some evidence to suggest that when you activate that glucagon receptor, you preserve lean tissue a little bit better than when you are looking at semaglutide or terzepatide. I have a couple of issues with that conclusion because when you look at the raw data, the phase two trials, those people started off by exercising and exercise is also a fantastic way to preserve lean tissue, but I digress. Let's look at the actual weight loss for retitrutide. So this is some of the research summary right here. I did a deep dive into this medication. If you've never heard of it, I'll link that video at the end of this video. Check it out because it'll give you a little more context. But you can see that there is a dose-dependent relationship between weight loss and retitrutide. So the more retitrutide you took, the more robust weight loss. This trial took place over 48 weeks, and it's crazy because the people that were taking 12 milligrams a week by week 48 lost almost 25% of their body weight. So extremely robust weight loss, very powerful medication, and extremely efficacious if your goal is to lose weight, basically as much weight as possible. Now that we understand those three medications, what they do and what makes them different, let's tie all this together and let's conclude this video. I put this chart together, I'm fairly proud of it, so do me a favor, if you've learned something, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm not gonna go over this in detail, so pause the video and take a look, but just understand that it goes in this order of operation when it comes to weight loss. Semaglutide has modest weight loss, terzepatide is fairly robust, and then retitrutide is profound. What do you do with this information? And again, this is just my opinion, which is obviously not medical advice. I'm just some guy on YouTube. If you're somebody that's a little bit overweight, maybe semaglutide's all you need. If you're somebody that's, you know, maybe you got a little extra extra, Terzepatide might be all you need. And we've had great success with both of those medications. Retitrutide is the heavy duty approach. There's people that need that, there's people that will benefit from that. But as it currently stands, that's probably the last ditch effort. Why not try these other things first? That's what we do with a lot of our patients. So look, if you're interested in becoming a patient, go on my website, Steel Health and Hormone Center, center spelled R-E.com, fill out a contact form. We'll be in touch within 24 hours. 
no pressure either way. I know a lot of people watch these videos and they say, I can get it cheaper on the black market. That's your prerogative. You can do whatever you want. But if you wanna go legit, go on my website, fill out a contact form. We'll be in touch within 24 hours. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.